Lake St. Clair's legendary Mile Roads area continues to attract an inordinate amount of fishing pressure each spring. Hundreds of anglers from all over the country travel here to take advantage of Michigan's catch and immediate release season and sight fish for big smallmouth during the spawn. Hi guys, Kim Stricker here and welcome back to Hook and Look. Most anglers who visit Lake St. Clair scope out the lake from only one viewpoint, from the deck of their boat. But I've spent a great deal of time underwater here and continue to do so. In this video, I'll give you an underwater tour of the mile roads during the spawn and during the guarding stages. There's a lot of informative content here backed by captivating visuals, so it'd be to your advantage to view the entire video more than once. Let's get wet. As I made my descent, I was immediately greeted by a group of pre-spawners looking to pair up. You'll notice that the bottom substrate at a depth of six feet along this entire area is primarily a combination of sand and marl with bits of scattered vegetation. The current water temp had climbed into the mid 60s and several nests at this depth had been fanned, yet many were still vacant. Nonetheless, the spawn was about to get underway big time. I've got a pair that are doing it right now. It's not often you catch them in the act. It's amazing to be able to witness this stuff underwater. But that's the beauty of the, the Mile Road. This is a fish hatchery. You can see how the male, he's enticing the female, bringing her back to the nest. The male is a little bit smaller. And that's a big, brightly colored female. What was about to happen next, I've never captured before. The female was about to begin dropping her eggs. Check this out. Look at her vibrate. She dropped her eggs. She dropped her eggs. Oh, is that cool? I've observed many a bass in the act, but to actually witness the female releasing her eggs on the nest, well, that was a first for me. Let's take another look. She'll position herself alongside the male, then begins to quiver as she tilts to the side and releases eggs gradually, approximately 20 to 50 per session. This process will be repeated every 30 seconds or so and can last for hours. Depending on the female's size, she can lay anywhere from 2,000 to 10,000 eggs. During this stage, however, the pair are basically oblivious to their surroundings and unaffected by my camera or my presence. Likewise, they're not interested in striking a lure either. Yet, following the spawn, it's on in a big way, and this is the attraction here on the mile roads. It's the male's parental duty to guard the eggs, and they do that with vigor. During this stage, their primary focus is on the bottom, so bottom bouncing baits within the nest work best. A staple for me are two baits rigged with a 3 8 ounce jig head. Because of the excessive pressure these fish receive, I downsize to a two and a half inch tube with a short shank jig head. That's that little two and a half inch fat coffee tube by Stray King. But isn't that nice? As with all my videos, you can find a list of the featured lures and equipment, including links, below the video description. So be sure to check that out. In the days to come, the eggs will hatch and the fry will eventually swim up. The male stays close to protect the brood and his focus now broadens to the entire water column. I've found that this is a phase where they're particularly susceptible to a weightless soft plastic jerkbait, and Strike King's 4-inch caffeine shad is one of my faves. The darting action and the slow tantalizing fall of this bait really triggers the fish at this time. You may now understand that you'll have better success along the mile roads if you first confirm what stage of the spawn the smallmouth are in. 
This is where an AquaView camera can be of great benefit. It doesn't take long at all to scope out a few nests. So sight fishing for bass on the nest remains a controversy between sportsmen, purists, and also biologists. But with that said, Michigan adopted a special catch and immediate release season during the spawn a while back. And I interviewed Michigan DNR fisheries biologist Mike Thomas a couple years after to get a report whether this activity was affecting the fishery. From a research standpoint, um, we have not seen any indication that there's been an impact on our recruitment. Um, a lot of bass get caught and immediately released and uh, those fish do have the opportunity to get back down and protect the nest again. Um, or if they're in the guarding the, uh, the, the larval stage, you know, they can, can get back with those small fish and, and protect them. And so it, based on our trawl surveys where we catch young a year bass in September out here, um, we haven't seen any sign that there's been any big change in the pattern of recruitment. Um, it, it varies and varied before the regulation change and continues to vary after. With some years, uh, a lot of young smallmouth bass in the lake and other years, lower numbers. So it looks to me like we've uh, made a change that has really increased fishing opportunities which benefits the fishermen. It has resulted in what I think is probably a pretty substantial economic benefit to the area here around the lake because so many people are taking advantage of it and coming and fishing here at that time. And uh, at the same time, the, the resource looks like it's really doing well and, and is, um, is in a really good, good state. So I think overall, I'd have to say that it's been a win-win. Then hopefully that trend continues. To finish our tour, I'd like to also point out that the areas I've found where the vegetation thickened harbor a fair population of respectable largemouth, especially in the areas where there's submerged wood present. A variety of panfish inhabit the weed growth and wooden structures as well. So from my underwater viewpoint, you can plainly see that the entire span of the mile roads appear to be a prolific fish hatchery, especially when it comes to smallmouth bass.